this is your spoiler warning. If you don't want 2020's Sonic the Hedgehog spoiled, then stop watching or listening now. Hello and welcome to Bad Adaptation, where we watch and talk about every theatrically released video game adaptation, their sequels, tie-ins, and whatever else we fancy. I'm your host, Finn, and I'm joined as always by my co-host, the buff film buff, Guy. Hello. You're going to want to watch that one to see the, uh, the old flicks of the arm there. Uh, this week, we're doing the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which was made in 2020 and directed by Jeff Fowler. First time director? director. I was going to ask that. What a way to debut. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, and I suppose we'll talk about it later, but successfully. Absolutely, successfully. One of my questions to you, because I did not research this mm -hmm. prior to watching Sonic, was uh, whether or not what this direct had done before. We love to d delve into the history. He'd done nothing. Is that right? Like on his Wikipedia, like he'd done like a short film in 2004. Really? Something like that. But okay. this is like yeah. his big feature length directorial debut. Over a hundred million dollar budget. Yep. Uh yeah, just give it to Jeff Fowler. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the Jeff Fowler <laughs> from 2004 short film fame. <laughs> and and he also went on to direct the sequel to this as well. Okay. And I imagine he's doing the third. I haven't looked into it. Yep. But we'll cover that when it comes out, I imagine. <laughs> I think, is that later on this year? Maybe the year after? Maybe. Or Depends what, when you're listening or watching so, Sonic, because Sonic 2 came out last year? Something like that. Yeah, 2022. Um, and I, I must admit that when that came out, I considered watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, yeah. but I considered it. I considered watching this when it first came out as well. Right. But I didn't. <laughs> so this was my first time watching it. Yeah. So here I am back again. <laughs> going to see video game movies at the movies because I went to see this at the movies. Yeah. I'm just a real sucker for punishment with it. Like this, this whole nostalgia thing, this whole, you know, what I've been brought up on mm -hmm. has been exploited over the course of 30 years over and over and again for me to watch bad films. I wonder why. It's almost as if people like you keep on giving them yes, money to do so it's true it's strange I, you'd think that i would have learned my lesson but multiple times I, I don't think you would have learned your lesson knowing you well yeah i'm just a i am a sucker for punishment i don't know what it is it's i don't know whether it's like a desire to know how a desire to know how they made it a movie like as <laughs> in i'm just kind of like this is a video game i played or something i'm very familiar with how did it turn what how did it all get brought together to become a different thing? Is, yeah. uh, maybe that, like, there's a curiosity around that. Obviously, we're tapping into fond memories mm -hmm. um, and all those sorts of things. But, uh, you know, like, if I were to, I, I really can't explain why I was, because <laughs> maybe you, I went to see more movies. And uh, you say 2020 was Sonic. This was February 2020 was when it released to Western audiences. So, and you know what happened quickly after then, don't you? Okay. I think I'm beginning to put a couple things in, in yep. together in my head because I was like, was, I, I don't go to that many movies now. It was just at the tail end of uh, Global Happiness. Yeah. And then, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know that thing. That, that old thing. That thing that happened. Mm. So I guess prior to that thing, yes. I was... That thing being uh, the movie Bloodshot was released. <laughs> <laughs> I was super excited well, you know, I I went to I tried to go and see a movie once a week mm -hmm. uh, at the cinema. Yes, and so presumably Sonic the Hedgehog was the only thing on that week. What, the movie of the week. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. It wasn't just the movie of the week, but we'll get into that. But you talked about how this was something you grew up with as a kid. Yeah, man, I was thinking about this. So in preparation for this mm -hmm. uh, thing, uh, I played Sonic again on my arcade machine. Yes, which one? Uh, I played. I started with Sonic One. Yep. Uh, I got frustrated with it within twenty seconds. Yeah. No, I can see that happening. Quit. <laughs> started Sonic. Well, hey, gotta go fast. <laughs> started Sonic Two. Uh, still got very frustrated with it quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think we should probably talk about you know some of the Sonic mechanics that are I feel like have, have been fundamentally broken since their inception. Right. Um, but. Uh, I played it, I was less frustrated, but still quite frustrated with it, and I got to, like, I, I finished the the Green Hill um, 
you know, I was going to ask, did you get to any other landscapes? Three or? levels and got to the like chemical plant yeah. place or whatever it was, and um, and then quit yeah. uh, uh, with absolutely no no desire to continue. Um, and then I played Super Mario Odyssey. Yep. And loved it, yep. and uh, and I'm up to me- Metro Metro World or whatever it is. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, and but I, I guess that kind of goes into like my my childhood was, I guess Super Mario, the original, mm-hmm. Super Mario three, and then pitted against Super Mario three, Sonic the Hedgehog two. Yes, and. That it was created to go head to head with it. It was well, Nintendo's got that. We need a mascot. Yeah. And a platforming mascot. How and, do we make it different? Yeah. Yeah. And and like back then, man, like this whole Nintendo Sega thing was serious business. Mm-hmm. And that even escalated further from, you know, Sega Nintendo to are you a Mario platform guy or yep. a Sonic the Hedgehog yep. guy? And, you know, this clash, this was like uh Dunedin, suburban, uh, middle class gang warfare, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you crippa of blood. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we were, but this was so. Hey, you like playing Sonic or you like playing Mario? Which one's better? No, no, no. We could get into a serious fight about this. We could come to blows, right? This, there could be serious. I'm getting fist, fisticuffs. <laughs> Do you know all the cheat codes for <laughs> Super Mario Brothers? I know all the ones for Sonic. <laughs> yeah, and so like, it sounds frightening. Certainly, in my like primary school slash intermediate school, it was like a real th- like hot, de- hotly debated topic. Mm. Something that you know caused people to fall out. Yeah, friendships to dissolve. Mm-hmm. Um, and as, was, as they should. As they should. Well, yeah. especially if you like Sonic. Um, oh. but- <laughs> well, hold on. Well, so here's the thing. <laughs> And, and this is sort of my argument, and I, f- I feel like it holds up today, is that Sonic came along and was way cooler. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, he's blue. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. that is cooler. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he can run really fast. Yeah. He's got an attitude to him. He does have he a nice... He taps his foot while he's waiting. Oh, and he's... he's got a need for speed. One of his eyebrows goes up while the other doesn't. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, And so there was certainly at that time this kind of like, hey, Sonic's just so much cooler. Yeah. So it's not even a competition. Mm-hmm. Why would you even like Mario? Mario is a short, fat plumber. Mm-hmm. You know? He sure is. He's not... He definitely doesn't have the cool factor, and especially for a kid of like, yeah. who who would you pick? Yeah, could, could Mario like he's like a a fun character, yeah. but he's in no way cool. Yeah, like I feel like he's kind of for like the seven or eight year olds. Are yes. still like, oh yeah, he's because you know you're not trying to be cool at seven or eight. Well, I certainly wasn't, and I'm still not. Yeah, but. Like Sonic was aimed at kind of the, the young teenagers. He's yes. got that edgy attitude. Exactly. I don't care about nothing. Also, there wasn't like quite a particularly good Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon yeah. on around that time, which was really quite a good cartoon. I have like faint memories of that. Yeah. Again, I'm too young and cool to even, I'm too young and cool for Sonic even. Yes. I was all about Crash Bandicoot and Tekken and Final Fantasy and yep. all of that kind of stuff. Way, way edgier. Yeah, way cooler. Yeah, and aged just as well. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 so that's the thing is like, but I would say, and I would still argue is like, I would pick up and play Super Mario Brothers, mm-hmm. the original game, yeah, and get more enjoyment and find it more playable mm. than Sonic the Hedgehog two, which is essentially like two generations ahead of Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, and then if you put the more contemporary, say Super Mario World versus Sonic the Hedgehog two or three, mm-hmm. you're like. Uh, the just the play mechanics of Sonic for me have always been kind of fucked because yep. the whole idea, there's two things. Like, for starters, he's kind of, the idea that they make him move fast means that they make him essentially very slippery, like sliding around. He's got a lot of momentum. To give the illusion of speed yep. even when he's not going that fast. Yes. Which essentially makes every level that you're playing a Sonic the Hedgehog game like an ice level on another platformer. Yeah. Like, that's just how he controls. Everyone's favorite kinds of levels (laughs) after water levels. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's like this whole slippy, uh, like, kind of easy to mistime everything, very hard to be precise. And then we go into the mechanic of actually, you know, what does it mean, this making it really 
like the goal being to get him to go fast. Yep. And like the there's just a fundamental problem is that a your reactions just don't have time to keep up with him when he's going really fast to navigate the obstacles. And I feel like it's a lot more of a shift when you stop. Yeah. Like you're going fast and you make a mistake and it just stops and it's ah. Oh. Yeah. Well, oh, can I go back and start all that momentum again? No, because you're at this part of the level. Yeah. You're going to have to slowly go all the way back or it's not designed for you to make your way back. And that's what I think made me like, I, I grew up more with Sonic yeah. than with Super Mario. The first gaming memory I have is playing Sonic the Hedgehog on his Sega Saturn. Yeah. And not having a great time. <laughs> no. I, I, don't, I don't remember playing anything other than the Green Hill Zone because yeah. I was like five or six years old or something. Yeah. And just like oh you're going fast by just basically holding right you hold right and you just zoom along this flat surface and it goes and you know loops or whatever there's no jumps or anything and then oh there is a jump and i missed it and yeah it's like i've it's like i just got on a roller coaster and it just decided to stop yep oh i wanted i wanted to to keep going yeah but you messed up so you don't get to keep yeah whereas mario you're in control the whole time that's right everything is on it's all about you know the precision and the timing the gameplay of mario like we've mentioned before has always held up yes mechanically yes yeah and sonic was just oh it feels great to just get that momentum but you're not really doing a lot to That's get right. it or at least i wasn't no, like, i not. wasn't i wasn't good enough to i don't no. know if there's much in terms of yeah you know, like, the skill of getting that momentum and I've, keeping it i've seen people that you know kind of know the tricks of a, a thing and they can kind of blaze through a level mm-hmm. but it's definitely still kind of a matter of you know quite a, a much higher element of luck because you know did you run r- right into that spike or that enemy mm-hmm. or that thing that stopped you yeah and you're back to square one and what we're admitting is that we're not as good at video games as we'd like to be sure However, I think that there's also that ceiling of like you want something to be more accessible. Yes. And Mario having the element of collection to it, you know, collecting yep. all the collectibles, as yep. they're called. There's also that in Sonic. But it's then you've got to make a choice. Yeah. Do I collect everything? Or do I just go to the level through the level as quickly as I yes. can? That's kind of what it's designed to do. There is a subculture of, you know speed running as we've mentioned yep. before again with super mario as well that's not what it's necessarily designed for yeah for sonic the whole emphasis is he's fast yeah so when you're not being fast i'm like well then what make what separates him from other platformers i guess he taps his foot <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh, the the sort of controllability issues of sonic have never really been resolved mm. just like they've never truly because i've played the 3d sonics and stuff i yep. own the the Dreamcast Sonic. Um, I had. I'm sh- pretty sure I had the Saturn Sonic as mm-hmm. well. Um, and so, and I, and I had the 3DS Sonic. Yep. And they all kind of suffered from that. Like it's like they they're saying, "Hey, be, going fast is cool, yep. and this is part of our play mechanic." And within that play mechanic is a fundamental flaw that can never be resolved, yep. or at least so far they haven't managed to do it, which reoccurs every single time you do it mm. in these different ways. And, you know, um, I feel like it was like the coolness of Sonic, mm-hmm. uh, the kind of, uh, and the novelty of that speed Yes, was great at that time to kind of get those sort of teens or just preteens to be like, yeah, yeah, this is the way to go, but like, has absolutely not endured and i know there's still sonic games to this day but they're far far less successful than the ongoing mario franchise and far far less revered respected reviewed whatever however you want to put it there's it's almost like a running joke of just like there's no good 3d Sonics. sonic games yet yeah. they keep <laughs> <Make> fucking <it. laughs> trying whereas now there's like like you were saying yeah. super mario odyssey yeah. amazing it's yeah. it's it's mario but 3d yeah and it's you know closer to perfect than sonic will ever be absolutely and like yes the whole cap mechanics that they introduce like mm-hmm. there's the level of strategy and sort of thinking to navigate different also the other thing about sonic which are you know apart from obviously the classic fucking underwater levels of everything yeah. but like Woo. the other thing about sonic is like the levels get harder yep but the differences are graphical in terms and uh, in terms of like yeah now you're in this zone or that zone but they never really truly, maybe the casino one, but they never really truly like give you a point of difference. This this world 
and the way you play it yep. is the same as the last world and the way you play it yeah you know there's not huge like oh now i have to employ different styles of strategies yeah now i have to do this or that it's it's more like the the it looks different yeah but you're just doing exactly like, the same thing like the theme is aesthetic yes as opposed to like there's in super mario odyssey i'm gonna bang on about that one because that's the one i'm most familiar with yeah you know there's like a desert level and it is a lot more barren there's a lot less yeah. things to do on the surface but then you can go into some pyramids yeah. or into some caverns and there's some secret stuff going on yeah and then you go to the forest world and then you know there's different layers you can go up yeah. and down and there's like a deep forest area and there's a lot more you know bouncing yeah. off logs and swinging yeah. off things and so the theming of it affects the gameplay exactly not just how it looks yeah hmm. So, you know, you know, I, I feel like Mario may have lost the battle uh, back then in terms of the, uh, the perception of kids, but yep. it completely won the war. It's- it, absolutely. And I think how we talked about, uh, you know, Sonic being that embodiment of the 90s. Yes. That is still exactly that. It's like he's, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. ages. Whereas Super Mario staying true to just being this, you know, clean cut, baby face looking. You chubby plumber. Chubby little plumber who's just all about being positive and I yeah. get I get to the job are done. I'm yeah. a Mario. Yeah. That's held up because he's yes. kind of just stayed true to it and just being a nice little man. Yep. That holds up. People like nice little men. Yep. So sucks for us. <laughs> hey. That's that. I think that's a great uh, a takeaway of the the kind of the Mario and Sonic games at the time. Yeah, um, like Mario. A lot of the games are lauded as yeah. amazing. Sonic. Most of the games are bad. Yeah, over fifty percent. Yes, it's absolutely just well over. Mm. Also, where Nintendo clearly had like, although there's like lots of Mario spin-offs, mm-hmm. the true canon Mario games yeah, yeah, yeah. have been held to an exceptionally high standard, which Sega certainly did not. No. with uh you know there was like lots of kind of uh you know S- sonic's like you know um oh, sonic cd you know yeah uh, uh you know and and sonic 3 is what's the difference between sonic 2 and sonic 3 you get knuckles or whatever yeah whereas what's the difference between like super mario brothers 3 and super mario world like there's some very distinct um you know play mechanics that change with the cape and the this and the that um and you know what's the difference between even like say mario 64 and mario odyssey like there's massive differences yeah it's it's uh, a, a, and yet there's still familiar stuff with you know the same sort of things as well so um i feel like sega and this is like some to be critical of sega in general they had this problem with their consoles too, where they kind of just added little extra bits on or released things too quickly yeah. um, rather than properly kind of figure it out to the point where like consumer trust was lost. Yeah, so Sega really did what Nintendo didn't. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it went? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they, they, they say could do what Nintendo don't. Yes. Um, yeah, so... Uh, but now we sort of come to like the comparison to today, which is the Mario movie mm-hmm. versus the well, Sonic movie. Well, before that, I think I also just want to talk about the pop culture influence, not okay. just in gaming, yeah, but you know, just the the audiences that are more familiar with these two. Like Mario, I think has got an older audience. Sonic, not so much, but kids are still getting into Sonic. Yeah, Sonic's very much aimed at children now. I feel. Mm. Uh, fan art. <laughs> an easy transition for you. Yeah. Just Sonic for some reason really. I think it might. He might just be like easy or fun to draw or something. Yeah. For those of you watching or listening, just Google your name and yeah. then the Hedgehog yeah. in Google Images, and you'll find someone's drawn it. Right. It exists. Yeah. For me, I get mashups of Adventure Time and Sonic yeah, Hedgehog. Right. Funnily yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yours, I imagine. Oh, that's probably quite hard <laughs> hey it's the hedgehog guy <laughs> it's just some guy who got arrested in florida for some weird crime on animals <laughs> but yeah there's just there, there's a lot going on with sonic on the internet and i <laughs> i'd recommend maybe reading up on it but skipping any actual images or videos if you can help it uh, it's you don't think the same thing has happened with Mario? Not to the not, same degree. Not to the same extent. Yeah. Not as easy to draw for perverted, <laughs> I mean, uh, just, yeah, just a curious <laughs> individuals on the internet. 
Rule 34. <laughs> yep. So I've got a brief synopsis for this movie just okay. before we compare it to uh, Mario. Yeah. Uh, so Jim Carrey, Mike Wazowski, and a blue hedgehog star in the movie Sonic the Hedgehog, which follows the misadventure of an alien who can run fast. It's ironic because hedgehogs are slow, you see. He winds up on Earth leading a fun, secretive, yet lonely existence. Sound familiar? His loneliness manifests into a big plot explosion which results in Jim Carrey eating through every bit of scenery until the movie ends how all franchised kids' movies end, the good guys win, and the potential sequel is teased. Difference is, the sequel came out. So. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, there's not a lot of, like, plot to talk about. That's Well, there's in- more of a plot than Mario. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get into that. Yeah. I liked this. Yeah. I could watch this again. Uh, yeah. I think that Sonic wasn't integral to this being a good movie. Sonic could have been anything else, and it still would have been a good movie. Yeah. However, I think with Super Mario Brothers, it relied so much on the public's perception you know, of the things that Mario's done. And just the recognition of him yeah. and every part of every game that's ever been released kind of thing. Whereas I've criticized movies for feeling like it was a, it felt like a script was written that's been rejected multiple times and then they go, ah, what if we plug in this character from this video game and oh yeah, that'll draw more eyes to it and then it's made. Whereas I feel like this one was different. Mm-hmm. But if something, what like it's I think what this is, is the story is good enough that it could be any kind of mascot or animal law. That's right, yeah. Something that just appeals to kids. Yeah. And then there's also the element of Jim Carrey. Amazing. A huge return to form for him, I'd say, because he had a huge break of Jim Carreyisms. He wasn't doing the Jim Carrey shtick in movies since you know the late nineties, early two thousands, whenever he was doing his thing, as the last the mask. one was probably Bruce Almighty. Yes, right? and what was that like two thousand five, two thousand six, yep. something like that. Yeah, and fifteen years later, after he's gone through all that fucking weird things he was doing, <laughs> you, oh, you into, look at it as YouTube clips that oh, pop he, up he, out of it. He turned into a huge weirdo. He's like, "Oh, I'm not Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is a vessel that I yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, I, you've I, seen I'm, those I'm clips. Nothing but thoughts and <laughs> the perception of it. Yeah, you're not a philosopher. You're, <laughs> yeah. However, like, that kind of thing is going to go to the head when this was once probably the most popular man in the world. Yeah. He was leading Hollywood with, you know, Ace Ventura and he, The he, Mask. He and... was the first actor to be paid $20 million mm-hmm. for a film. Jesus. So, so he, he was the first one at that time, yep. so I guess in the uh, late 90s, I suppose, mm-hmm. uh, was the first person to start getting $20 million salaries just for him to be part of a film. Yeah. And, and, and like, he's known for that. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah, That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Even more popular than I thought. Yeah. I, th- like, it, it's happened to guys like him and, like, Mike Myers was another one. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if we talked about that on the podcast or not, but, you know, Austin Powers, people used to be able to make a living doing an impression. (laughs) Saying, yeah, baby. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Does that make you horny, baby? (laughs) Just being a... (laughs) It's fucking incredible how far pop culture has come and just like what what is class as entertainment. Just for the record, I still love the Austin Powers movies. Yeah, I loved them growing up. No, I mean, I still love them currently. I haven't seen them recently enough yeah. to say that holds up. They're still up, but pretty good. Yeah, it, he was in a league of his own in yep. terms of that kind of comedy. Like, yep. I think he his comedy has not really aged as much in terms of him doing that shtick now. That shtick that he did still holds up, but him still doing it now doesn't really hold up. But it's yeah. inspired so many since then who have morphed it and changed yeah. it into their own style of doing things. And I think the same has happened with Jim Carrey. But I think Jim Carrey was given freedom in this movie. Go, Absolutely. Here's, here's a loose script. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're going to dance to a song. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. What do you think? What do you want to do there? They won't even ask. They'll just do it. We'll, we'll film it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, well, what I said about Jim Carrey is that Jim Carrey decided to bring back Ace Ventura Jim Carrey. Yes. And he just immediately elevates the entire film from kind of just another average run-of-the-mill video game movie into like a generally really entertaining and funny film whenever he is on screen. Like his his 
jokes aren't the formulaic joke structure of quippiness. Say, so, like, yeah. I, I never found Sonic himself funny. Right. He's constantly just whipping out quips and jokes, yeah. and that that's kind of all he's doing. But they're all that kind of what people put Would as like, like Marvel esque. Yeah. That kind of just like a dumb little quip there. Yeah. And then, I mean, we've done it before. But this movie starts with a flashback. I know what you're thinking. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> Let me take you back. <laughs> yeah. But I think in this case, they they are kind of leaning into that, like, this, yeah. here's a bit of a trope. So, yeah, number one, they acknowledged that it was, like, they were poking fun at it. Yeah. This was the most successful, you're probably wondering how I got here, flashbacks that we've seen in these video game movies. So far. Of like it being this exciting thing happening. Okay, how did we get here? Yeah. As opposed to like a guy walking into the arena that we have zero yeah. concept of. I mean, it was literally a freeze frame. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> but they revisit it and yeah, it's a bit of fun. Yeah. And in comparing to the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. This, um, so I'm going to get into kind of the chronological points of the plot at this point, okay. um, just the, as the notes that I've got. I don't really have a lot of facts about the production of this yeah. movie, other than the, the kind of obvious uh, thing that we'll get into later. Yeah. But, you know, uh, you know, how did I get here? Yada, yada, yada. It shows his backstory of his caregiver, adopted mum, owl, yeah. being slaughtered by a bunch of echidna yeah. as he gets... Uh, kind of thrown into teleports earth. to earth through a magical portal ring yeah which the, is like the 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 sonic rings that we've seen in the games yeah they're like what the stars are to yeah you know mario except you know to mario they make him invincible to sonic he can either travel through time and space mm -hmm. uh or they make him go fast yep yeah <laughs> just one or the other pick, pick your poison throw yeah. one out and it just turns into a thing but like consume it and you'll go really fast. I think he's just natural. In the movie, he's just natural. Well, you fast. go faster. Ooh. Right? I believe <laughs> that's because that's when fast. he gets his blue energy is when he starts taking the coins. Yeah. And uh, he, similar to Mario, hates mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. <laughs> but he's, his next stop is a what, mushroom... Mushroom Kingdom will be the next planet he'll try. Because it, it, according to this, he's kind of tried at, hanging out on a few planets yeah. since being um, f thrown to safety by his mother, Owl. Yeah. Which I don't know if that's from the games or not. Anyway, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's, it's just a quick thing at the beginning of the film. But he's tried a few planets and, you know, oh, this one didn't work or this one was dangerous. So he's on Earth and he's been here for about 10 years. And the next one he wants to go to, Mushroom Kingdom. And I thought, oh, is that a... Reference to Mario? No, it's a reference to something within Sonic. Just right. coincidence. Yeah. Or an intentional, you know, call to Super Mario Brothers, but from within the game mm, originally. Mm, mm. But 11 minutes in, I wrote, wow, this is this joke here is funnier than anything that was in the Mario movie, which is uh, when Mike Wazowski, or I think his name's yeah. Tim Wachowski or something. Yeah. No. But I'll call him Mike Wazowski. It's promoted to move to San Francisco as yeah. you know he's a he's a sh wants he's a to be sheriff of a small town of Green Hills. Yes, and he gets promoted to be a, a sheriff in San Francisco. Yeah, I guess a bigger city, more pay, yeah, something yeah. like that. And his wife or partner yeah. has two cakes. <laughs> One that, uh, you know, oh, congrats on getting it. And the other one is, ah, San Francisco sucks anyway. <laughs> yeah. And she opens that one first. And we go, oh. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's a, that's a, that's a yeah, funny little game. I've seen it in other things, but it was just, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Good on you. There's, there's kind of only two things where I, where I sort of noted of the script where I was like, hmm. And the, the first one being that essentially, you know, yeah. So, so Sonic is a terrified of being alone. Like, he doesn't want to be alone. Yep. He doesn't like being alone. So what he does is he spies on Mike Wachowski or Tim Wachowski or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah. Yeah. He spies on him uh, and, like, spends time acting as if he's friends with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, like, in secret. So yes. he watches the TV through the window. Yeah. He watches them through the window. He knows everything about him. He, he calls him the Donut Lord. And yeah. he calls his wife the Pretzel Lady or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, yeah, okay, so I get it's kind of a, a fun thing. But on the other hand, this guy is, like, a serious fucking psycho stalker. Oh, Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. that has developed an unhealthy attachment to someone who has no concept, like much like stalkers do. Yep. <laughs> but he's but he's Sonic. But but he's like. <laughs> He's like a 12-year-old boy. He's a kid, yeah. so he's... that makes it better than some of the adult stalkers that you see. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, he's stalking Donut Lord as opposed to, I don't know, a little girl or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, But that was one thing that I, I did make a note of. And he's also, Sonic's got this kind of pad where he's collected all these things, which is not dissimilar to like the, the Ninja Turtles hang out under the sewer where they got a bunch of stuff but anyway Every, everyone wanted like a cool underground hangout exactly. basement like yeah, yeah 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 man cave but for little boys and obviously they have like essentially they utilize sonic being really fast he's kind of like the flash he's you know yeah. and, and he's got super speed so he can do things really quickly but and they show him doing things really quickly in a, like a sort of a montage of him in in his pad right yeah. But one thing that they do, mm-hmm. which is fucking impossible and it pissed me off. Oh, what's that? Is it the skipping? Yes. <laughs> is that he, he's he's skipping. So yeah. he's he's playing jump rope with himself. So he's, and this is the issue. He, he's it, holding both ends of the rope and He's holding both jumping. ends of the rope and jumping. And it's like, he's fast. He's not able to fucking, you know, become three people. Yeah. Like he, he can't occupy different um spaces at the exact same time he's flashing in between all three of them very quickly <laughs> so quick that our eyes register it as three is yeah, that exactly. what you're saying yeah, yeah yeah i don't buy that i it's was because, just like, well we can only see like but, 60 frames per second or whatever he's going so much faster than that that that's just how we view it i was just like you can't be holding the two right i'm sorry you've lost me <laughs> given up on this nah, I'm, I'm out i'm going I'm back out of Super here Mario yeah. brothers <laughs> So that was my only two kind of points of concern, really. Oh, there's more, but also, <laughs> it's I mean, Sonic while, whilst I went into Super Mario Brothers for being, I, I, I wasn't really going into plot points or yeah. inconsistencies with yeah. the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's more just this is shit quality. Nothing's happened. Yeah. As I feel like with plot points and oh, this doesn't actually make sense really if you think about it. And if you're doing that in a kid's movie, you can't do that. Nah. You can't do that. Like, I mean, he sends an EMP effect. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know what an EMP is, don't worry, they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> As they've been telling us for the last 20 fucking years yep. when EMPs go off. That's right. Because they want to have a bomb in the movie, but they don't want people to die. Yeah. Uh, it's an electromagnetic pulse, which shuts down all electronics in the surrounding area, except for when the main character well, main human character wants to make a phone call. Yeah. Yep. Wouldn't the cell towers be down? That's a good point. Yeah. Oh, actually, I did instantly think that when he was taking all those calls. Mm-hmm. I was like, how's he taking a call? Though That's Ana- down too. Analog phone. <laughs> Can on but, a string, baby. And that's the thing. <laughs> had they had the cord, yeah, I'd, I'd I just, might have bought it more. Yeah. I just think, nah, don't, don't. <laughs> don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> What did you want it to be? An actual bomb? Those are your only options. EMP or actual bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our mate M. Bison from the... Oh, I actually wrote here, which is weird. Like, this is really strange because... Um, what's that guy's name again? Neil McDonough. Neil McDonough is not like a small time actor. No. And yet, in this film, this is... Literally, I wrote, hey, it's nice to see an M. Bison cameo, for, for, uh, you know. It is almost a cameo. Because it is a cameo. Yeah. Essentially, he is this general that Dr. Robotnik, Jim Carrey, talks yes. down to mm-hmm. for a scene. Yep. he's not. And I was like, I guess I, I was like, in my head, I was like, I must have forgot that he's in the rest of this film yeah. as the general. Yeah. He's not. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to make note of him being in it because um, he's going to be doing something else. M. Bison will surely be doing a whole bunch of things. No, I think he just looks great. He's like, got he a just, good he just, sergeant look. And it's the the hair, the natural silver hair that he's yep. got. Or I think it, it was probably platinum blonde. It used to be, right? And now it's yep. turned subtly silver. Man mm. has looked like he's barely aged. Yeah. So that I reckon. It's yeah. like when people shave their head and they, they yeah. age really nicely. Yeah, he's done the same thing. Good on him for however much money he got for literally standing there being yelled at by Jim Carrey. <laughs> Trying not to laugh while Jim Carrey says funny things, which but, I imagine was actually quite difficult for some of these actors. Yeah. Um. And yeah. And then sort of Jim Carrey comes in, right? Yes. He fucking <laughs> makes an entrance into this. Movie. He certainly does. Yeah. And uh, you I, know, you know, I was ready to kind of cringe. Yeah. Because I was like, I loved Jim Carrey as a kid, and things that I loved as a kid do not hold up. <laughs> I was a dumb kid. <laughs> I had bad taste. I still do. <laughs> Terrible taste. Yeah. yeah. I like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but no, he comes in and sort of introduces himself and the idea, which is, I thought, like, this actually, the whole Dr. Robotnik character in this is like the best character, uh, in my opinion, because there's two things going on, but obviously he has this big entrance and mm -hmm. Dr. Robotnik in this is kind of like a genius scientist that the government call in yep. to track down essentially this alien they believe or this strange doings. Like he's a government specialist type yep. guy. And that, even they think like, Oh, he's weird. He's a last resort. He's a weird dude. But he's really smart. Yeah, so they kind of... Like, what is it? He's got... It's either in the movie that they say it or yeah. Jim Carrey said that, oh, he's got an IQ of 300. Yeah, and that's... I did, think, did he say that in the movie? I don't know. I don't remember him saying that in the movie. What I read in the context was yeah. he said that, oh, yeah, Dr. Robotnik has an IQ of 300, so it only took me a week and a half to prepare for the role. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a funny bit. <laughs> yeah, and, and and you know that's the thing is like what's great is that while this is a, just a funny kind of over the top Jim Carrey character, mm -hmm. um, everything kind of hits. Like almost everything he does is yeah. like really funny. Yeah. Um, and kind of, but not the most obvious thing that you would do. Like it's it's not even like oh I've seen Jim Carrey do that before. Like I guess you've seen Jim Carrey do kind of big characters yeah. before but you haven't seen him do this and the whole premise that he's this super intelligent guy mm -hmm. that kind of believes he doesn't get the respect that he deserves yep. believes that he kind of should be like treated better have more respect from everyone around yeah. him be higher up in the chain yeah. of what he's doing like well, he it says is the problem with being so smart is that everyone's an idiot yeah and it, like all of that like sort of as a concept informs the way he plays it yeah and in a really good way yeah, he to is. make him a, a, a not just a one dimensional like villain that you know like he's not just evil exactly and he's not just silly yes. he's a, he's he is evil and he is silly. silly and he's silly because he can do whatever he wants yeah but yeah, uh, yeah ultimately he's sort of a tortured genius yeah that has sort of grown up the wrong way. Oh, man. God, can I relate? <laughs> but Not to the lonely little fucking creature uh, <laughs> who tries to say funny things and it never lands. I can't relate to that one. <laughs> I found that Super Mario to be... I had a few chuckles throughout it. Yeah. But when I rewatched this, I was like, oh, this is actually genuinely funny. Yeah. Um, Like, as in there's stuff that it's not the most obvious thing. Like, for instance, he comes up to... Um, <laughs> he comes up to um, Wachowski, uh, the character, and he's like, Good morning, my rural chum. <laughs> Just, you know, like yeah. the yeah. opposite of trying to fit in, but the opposite of achieving yeah. that. Yeah. And he says, I was spitting out formulas while you were spitting out formula. Pretty clever. And then James Marsden replies, I was breastfed, actually. Nice. Rub that in my orphan face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it was all just good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was a lot of that with him. If ever a star is to come into a, a sort of a film and just elevate it by what he's doing and his take on it, this is like the best example of that. Like, like you mentioned, he's not doing his greatest hits. Yeah. He's doing things along that same line that kind of bring in that same feeling of when he was doing that but he's not just doing yeah oh here's that punchline yeah, i did yeah 20 years ago yeah it's just he's just bringing that same energy yeah it's i also i thought uh uh also one of the last things he so at the end of the film mm -hmm. he's blasted off into this other thing yeah uh, and this is when we see the true Dr. Robotnik. He's got a shaved head and his oh, mustache yes. has grown he's, out. He's now in the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. He got put through the portal. And, yep. we, and we have this reveal of him like looking at a reflection and he's like, My grasp on sanity remains absolute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just stuff like that. It's good shit. Yeah. It's good shit. So yeah. Jim Carrey is, yeah, the best thing in this for sure. What do I look like? An imbecile? Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! Um, I also did make a note that we have James Marsden. So he's the guy mm. that plays Tim Wachowski or Kowski or yeah. Donut Lord, whatever you want to call him. And I just wrote that he is the most, he's the quintessential nondescript guy. Mm -hmm. The perfect a guy guy. Yes. Yeah. In everything he's in, yes. he, he's not. He's a he's a good actor. He's not mm -hmm. a bad actor. 
He's he he's not like you know a charisma uh, vacuum like some of the people that we talk about here. Um, he's a he's a good quintessential nondescript a guy. Yeah, and so, he's been playing that role well for yeah. uh, I guess almost twenty years now. It's been working for him, hasn't it? It has been. If it ain't broke, yeah. But um, just. On that, so there are at least three other actors considered for this part. Right. All who have kind of a similar feel to them. Some have been elevated a bit more yep. in recent years. Um, oh, Tom Holland, yep. who just gets offered anything. Sure. And, um, hey, you need a protagonist white guy to be the lead of this? How about right, Tom he, Holland? How about Tom Holland? Or how about Chris Pratt? Yeah, Chris Pratt. Yeah, I can see I'd, that. They'd probably give him a few more quips or he'd yeah. try to, you know. Yeah. Uh, or Chris Evans, who's probably, yeah. nah, I want to go do a... Another weird. Captain America. Yeah, or, or some other. You're going to think Bullet Train. Is it Bullet Train? Yeah, he does some. He does Captain America and then he does some weird fucking stuff. weird shit. But that's good. I mean, that. No, see, I think it, it's weird, but I don't think he's great in them. Right, okay. But good on him for trying. Well, that's what I mean. I feel like, like if, you know, you could just be kept. Do Captain America esque roles forever. Yeah. At least he's like, look, I'm going to use my Captain America success to go. F- Make movies with Anadamas for the rest of my life. Well, you know, that's probably a bad example because that, I mean, that's a Netflix what? film. The I mean, true seal of quality. I mean, he was also in Knives Out and he was really good in that. Yeah. Because he played completely against what the expectation yeah. is of someone who's just played Captain America. Yeah. But yeah, so James Mars is good. And he also, like, he's ready to, he seems ready to kind of play with Jim Carrey as well. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, and, and have a bit of fun with that. And I thought that was cool. Um, the voice of Sonic. Yeah. Incredible. What's his name? Ben Wheatley? Ben Schwartz. Okay, there we go. Who I mainly know as John Ralphio from uh, Parks and Recreation. Okay. And he's fantastic in that as well. Completely separate. Not right. not even similar at all. Yeah. But yeah, he's done a lot of voice acting stuff. Okay. Um, It's just, it seems to be something that he does. Yeah. Yeah. He'll, he'll just do half acting, half voice acting. And it was a solid Sonic. Yeah. Absolutely. A good Sonic. Well, he was a fan of it and um, his favorite person is Jim Carrey. So dream for him to be getting yeah. this role yeah. three times. Yeah. Breaking um, it in. So anyway, they, I guess J- Dr. Robotnik tracks them and they kind of go on this road trip where they become friends, Sonic and um, uh, Wachowski These become friends. These two unlikely characters yep. become familiar with each other and they form a friendship. And sort of Sonic realizes that like he hasn't really done anything with his life. Yeah. You know? So he's, he's like a 12-year-old boy making a bucket <laughs> list. <laughs> yep. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> bit heavy yeah it is a bit weird because it's like well yeah you're a dumb little alien that you know you haven't done anything because you've been around for like five seconds yeah but th- that was my only other issue is that this blue uh hedgehog alien mm-hmm. with like giant oversized hands and feet mm-hmm. and giant eyes you know thankfully uh, <laughs> like heads into a bar and his only like disguise oh, is yeah. he's got a cowboy hat. Yeah. And really that's it. And he's he's got a coat on. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't immediately get recognized as There's Yorisha. just no yeah. way that you would like No it, one's getting fooled by that. Let's yeah. just say that Sonic is uh yeah, like we don't Sonic does not exist in obviously this reality. Yeah. Sonic the game does not exist yeah. in the, unlike the Hitman. <laughs> yeah, 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 I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it does not exist. So you just, but you, as soon as you're at the bar, you go, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. And like you, that and is the most alarming thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I like the deleted scene where they just shoot him in the head as soon as they see him. <laughs> yeah. Don't think that exists. But <laughs> but, but but that's uh, and so that was the only other time in this uh, movie where I was kind of like. Hmm. But then, so he's so basically they they end up at a bar because um Mike Wazowski goes to make a phone call and he just kind of sneaks off because he wants to go and kind of live his life a little bit and interact with people. Yeah. Now that he's kind of outed himself to Donut Lord, and then six years too late, they do that scene from the X Men movie Days of Future Past with Quicksilver where he's so fast that. Time basically stops and he goes around and he messes yeah, with did, everybody. I did then, want to talk about and that. And then time just unfreezes. And yeah. hey, which they'd already done twice okay. in the X-Men movies. Because that is what I wanted to raise. It's basically what uh, Matrix slow-mos did yep. for any Bullet movie time. after yeah after 1999 did for the next. I mean, it's still fucking going. Yep. They're still referencing it in Space Jam 2. Yeah. 
because uh, the writers of that are probably 70 fucking years old. But, like, <laughs> all the executives that approve every bit of dialogue for those. Anyway, luckily we're not here to review that. <laughs> Thank but, God. Well, that was my review of it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's just, they're going to keep doing it. Yeah. The Flash movie's about to come out. I'm sure. In 2022. Do they're, they're, they'll do something or a different version of it. Yeah. Probably. Or maybe they'll show some restraint. Well, that's the thing, because I looked at that and I was like, yeah, this is the X Men scene. Yeah, again. seen it. You yep. know, I, and I have seen it, and it is very blatant. Like, oh, yeah. it's exactly the same thing. Yep. Like, without, there's no, like, literally, he moves and re- and readjusts things mm-hmm. so that when time speeds back up, you know, chaos. Things, chaos, yeah. yeah. Um, chaos emeralds. And it's like, I get it, because Sonic is fast. What else are you going to do? Mm hmm. But it was the most kind of... Six years had passed. So I mean, what I... do you mean? You're saying it's okay? No, I'm saying uh, like... It's not okay. You've got to do it quicker than that if you want to blatantly rip it off. You you know, you can't even say like, oh, we just thought of it independently. No. Yeah. Because they did it twice. And that's the other thing they did. And it was those were the kind of the standout scenes in those movies of mm. everyone being like, well, the movie would have been maybe not that great, but the Quicksilver scene was that's great. That's the bit everybody remembers. That'll be the bit that has the most views on YouTube of... Yeah, the Quicksilver scene. You probably just Google that, and it's there. It's kind of interesting because to me, that like those two scenes, mm-hmm. obviously they're different characters. Yeah, but they're so similar. Yeah, that we get into this like, could X X Men or Fox sue? I don't think you can copyright the idea of someone running fast when. But the exact same scene. I mean, if they did it shot for shot, maybe. But then they could just say, it's an homage. Mm, That's how true, you get away with it. True. So you get away with it. Nah, it's yeah. not plagiarism. It's an homage. It's an homage. It's a tribute. Yeah, it's a tribute. Do you want any money for it? No? Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So, yeah, he goes through that. And then we sort of come to the finale. Yeah, that quickly, at least for us. Because Pretty yeah, much. I mean, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they go on an adventure and they become friends. Yeah. And so Mike Wazowski teams up with Sonic to yeah. defeat. Jim Carrey, bad guy. Yeah, and they have this kind of showdown with a whole bunch of drones. And, yeah. You know, one thing I did notice too, speaking of things stealing from other things, mm-hmm. is that in at the end of this film, basically Sonic powers up with a power ring to defeat Dr. Robotnik. Yeah. At doing things like, you know, he kind of becomes invincible yeah. uh, in much the same way that Mario and Luigi power up with a power up to defeat Bowser at the end of super mario i think it's basically like any superhero movie i guess so yeah <laughs> but you know it's a very specific would you class this as a superhero movie well it, 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 like sonic is certainly depicted as the flash yeah so it's kind of a borderline mm. super superhero it's origin not, story it's not a comic book superhero but yeah. superheroes don't just come from comic books. It's true. They do more famously, but, you know, not every single one. Yeah. And so I guess... What what else it does from uh, Super Mario Brothers is it references the games. Yeah. However, way, way... Way less. Not just less, but better. It's, like, it, I was like, oh, yeah, I do kind of recognize that. But it wasn't... It was like uh, just in passing as opposed to like they've kind of gone, ah, uh, yeah. here you go. Here's the reference. There you get that. Num, num, num. Eat that up. Yeah, there you go, little fat boy. What? Enjoy, enjoy all these treats <laughs> little, we serve you. Are you familiar with what these? Fatty nom, 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 pushing nostalgia, it down your fucking throat. Fatty, <laughs> fatty nostalgia nugget. Are we going to give to you? you just, it's, oh, here's a little morsel. Oh, if you, if you, if you want, you don't have to. It's okay. Yeah, I think that was the thing. Is that you, you don't have to. It's okay if yeah. you don't buy into those or you don't recognize that. It's okay. It's not going to like dramatically affect your enjoyment of the film. They were probably like they didn't have a side scrolling him doing a loop kind of. Yeah, you know they didn't do any of that. Be like the the video game, don't you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm watching it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think it showed a lot more restraint. Sure. Yeah. Like it being Sonic isn't the reason it's good, but it being Sonic is what makes it better yeah than if it was just a new thing that we hadn't heard of i don't know let's say hop the movie Mm. you know that's kind of a if you had to put something familiar in there maybe that would have been successful yeah yeah that's kind of that's how i'm kind of comparing and then also the it's a more of a kids movie thing but just saying the theme of the movie out loud right at the 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 peak don't like that no if it's a good enough theme, you don't have to tell people. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. 
you are trying to harm my friend and I'm going to defend him because that's what friends do. Like, mm. He basically just tells you, like, this is about how friendship is good. And you didn't, don't think they sort of did that with, like, yeah, I can beat you because, I, and I don't know if he actually said that, but, like, because oh, I'm not alone. You know, yeah, like he, I'll splice it in of what he actually says. Right. This is my power, and I'm not using it to run away anymore. I'm using it to protect my friends. It's very on the nose, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Super Mario did it too. Like, yeah. we are brothers, and yeah. therefore we are stronger together. Yeah. Thank you, Luigi. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm aware of the concept of <laughs> we share parents. So, so I guess in the Mario versus Sonic wars. Mm-hmm. That has now transcended... Uh, is, that, is that a bit heavy language? <laughs> no, no, I think dark. it's accurate. Just like gang warfare that has, tra- <laughs> has, has transcended the Dunedin suburban streets of the 90s yeah, yeah. and has now escalated into film form. Did they ever recover from those gang wars? Well, some friendships never did. <laughs> The streets are still laden with the controllers <laughs> of the Sega supporters and the Nintendo nincompoops. Uh, but yeah, so it, within context of that, I feel like whereas Mario has truly destroyed Sonic in the game world. Uh, and just in pop culture in general. Yeah. Sonic has come back hard and fucked Mario up right here. But unfortunately not. According to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, yes. so this uh, had, I'm just going to, just in terms of the, the budget and yeah. whatnot, uh, $90 million. Super Mario Brothers had $100 million. I think I may have said $150 million on the yeah. episode or whatever, but it was $90 million and $100 million. Okay. This made $300 million. Yep. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Brothers made a billion more than that. <laughs> So that that I think shows not the 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 how good the movie is. It's the familiarity with the pop culture source. How mm. how people endear themselves to Super, right. like yeah. Super Mario compared to Sonic. Yeah, I think like if you switch the quality of the movies around, it's not really going to affect yeah that as much. Yeah, and I guess so. That's the thing is like what we're saying here is we're saying Sonic is the better film. Oh, by far. And, but what, what, I guess what we're saying is perhaps due to the dominance of Mario, mm-hmm. the me, and I actually didn't mind the Mario film, mm-hmm. but, but, but the, 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 the kind of the lesser Mario film has been given the opportunity. It was always going to gross more if it managed to tick those boxes yeah. in a way that even if Sonic did, it doesn't matter because, you know, like even for me, I'm like, fuck Sonic. Uh, you've given me like tw- so. Don't Google fuck Sonic. Yeah, you, you've given, <laughs> but you know, essentially, like you've given me twenty years of twenty years worth of bad games. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and, and so, like, I don't have any. And plus, I was on the Mario side back in the the Nintendo oh, Sega Wars. Oh, so goodness. showing his true colors. Yeah. So they'll you know, come for you. <laughs> so you know. So I don't have an allegiance. You know, like that. Yeah, basically the the games have killed the nostalgia of the character for a lot of people. Yeah. I have a feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, but Sonic is better. We're saying. Yeah, diminishing yeah. returns is yeah. what you're meaning with the absolutely popularity of the character. Speaking okay. of, uh, so the character of Sonic, <laughs> yeah. the literal render of the character of Sonic, <laughs> there was a lot of controversy. Yeah. Uh, because when the initial trailer was released, there uh, were problems. <laughs> there were problems. Not for us, because it meant that we easily got to pick the winner of your favorite segment, Worst Hair. And the worst hair in this movie isn't in this movie, it's in the original. And it is the entire character of Sonic the Hedgehog. He yeah. wins first worst hair, not just his hair, not just the blue bits. The entire thing is worst hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's become. You know, a meme. Yep. Even uh, showing up in like Chippendales. There's a character, like <laughs> Chippendales that... Rescue Rangers, and that like, like bad Sonic or ugly right. Sonic or something. Yeah. And it's just they've used that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was also a reference in this movie to a uh, famous uh, fan art called Sanic, <laughs> Sanic the Hedgehog, and it was, you know the little piece of paper that the crazy man holds up, being like, "Oh, this is the Blue Devil yeah. that I've been chasing. Yeah. The only one who knows about Sonic's existence in the movie before he outs that's himself." Right. That drawing is concept. Is is that meme old... of Sanic? Oh right. It was, it was like a video from way back. Some guy just made a 
YouTube video of like how to draw Sanic the Himjok. Uh, yeah, okay. or something. It was just a parody. Whatever. Yeah, but but just it took on a life of its own. <laughs> and now it's pr- it's pretty iconic. Uh, yeah. So that entire thing was a major fuck around. Yeah. However, not as much as you'd think. Uh, so. Before we do best or worst, I'll just go into Don't You Know, because this is pretty much the only interesting yeah. part of how this movie was made. This movie, I don't know, it was just you mush all the bits into the factory and it outspits a movie. <laughs> but um, so the Sonic redesign yeah. was done by Marza Animation Planet. They had to go and basically step yeah. in. And um, the redesign added an estimated $5 million to the production budget. Wow. That's less than I would have thought. Way less. Considering it took five months. And was achieved without overtime. Yeah, that's insane. And some people speculated that it was all a publicity stunt. Hmm. That the that the design that we got was always planned to be the design, but they thought if they got some talking points first of let's do an ugly one, the fans will definitely have backlash, and then we'll go, oh no, we've listened to you, mm. and get the endearment of the fans of, oh wow, they listen to us, our voices are important, we're being heard, and I like them now. Mm. I think it's been proven that that definitely wasn't the case, it was just, oh, we made a really poor decision going into this. Yeah. They tried making him, like, humanoid. Yeah, they, they gave him they, teeth and they, regular they, eyes. They and, uh, over anthropomorphized him. <laughs> They over anthropomorphized him. Easy for you to say. They over anthropomorphized him. Anyway, that's not what even they did. once. They over <laughs> no. anthropomorphized him. Anthropom- <laughs> an- an- anyway, that's what they did. They over anthropomorphized him. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> that that being essentially, yeah, they tried to make him look. Too human. Trying to make him look like a kid in a costume. And and, and, and I think that, you know, that also goes to show, like, well, I mean, it's all very interesting because this is, like, one of the few times in, like, movie history that a movie uh, has listened to its fans yeah. prior to release. Like, normally... Well, one uh, of the most famous examples, yeah, anyway. Normally fans get angry about certain aspects of something mm-hmm. and uh, the movie goes... Yeah, cool. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you... But, like, no, you're still going to pay to see it, aren't you? If yeah. you're angry enough to be that passionate about hating it, you're probably going to pay to see a ticket to hate watch it. Yeah. And and so, normally, that's how things go. Or, just alternatively, which is a completely reasonable thing, is the design renders and everything is done. We can't do anything else. Yeah. This is the Sonic. You're going to see the Sonic. Um. Now... It is surprising that it was only $5 million, and I'm mm-hmm. sure that if like they sort of went out to these different CG companies, or even the CG company that created the original version, yeah. and they're like, okay, look, we're definitely not liking what, what the feedback we're getting online. Uh, it was <laughs> loud. How much, Very vocal. How much can we do this for? And they threw out, they're like, probably $5 million. Now- there's different, like, I do wonder too if, like, essentially the, you know, because essentially you're having to redo every shot, but I think the where they would have saved money is that when the trailer came out, they probably had done fuck all shots. They would have done all the shots for the trailer, and then they would have been working on yeah all the kind of skins and the this and the that for the renders of all the things throughout and they weren't starting from scratch they still would have had all like the The, keyframes of the animation and whatnot the body mechanics could still say exactly the same so essentially it's kind of redoing a face yeah and the hair (laughs) well that we're we not really having the inside knowledge not not we're experts on this total speculation yeah however i don't know Seems about right. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think it's more believable if you understand that, like, that it, it wasn't 100% done, mm-hmm. and maybe that would have been, like, the $20 million fix yep. or the or more fix, because I was just like, well, how much is it going to cost them to fix that? I, I imagine it'd be heaps knowing just how long it takes to do these visual effects and re-render visual effects. Well, put it this way. Yeah. Movies with smaller budgets have spent a lot more doing reshoots for way worse reasons, for it to be shit. Yeah. So this was absolutely justified to spend that amount of money, that amount of time, 
for the amount of value they would have got out of doing it. So yeah, like they listened to the fans, they changed it and everything was fine. I guess the other weird thing is why they chose to kind of go, like obviously Sonic is so identifiable as looking like Sonic that there's no real need to make him more human or do anything different. Yeah. Unless he was going to be like an actual human or something, you know, like he was going to be really different. I think the question is basically, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I think that, that is that's the question, the question everyone uh, kind of raised. Question. They did ask that, and uh, it was answered with, hey, sorry about that, we got it wrong. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Not There's not a lot of humility in the film industry. There's not a lot of, like, it's weird for the fans to be right. Yeah, that because a lot have, like, of the times they're 100% wrong on, on their, like, hot takes of why something, like... Listen wh- to me talk about Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. I'm probably wrong. I might. It seems like I'm in the minority. I mean, it, you know, in context of its success, you're 100 percent wrong. Sure, uh, and I'm happy to be so. <laughs> I'll stay here on this tiny little ant hill on the, hmm. so, on the soapbox. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like, so it's weird that they were like, "Shit, the fans are right, mm. and let's fix it." Yeah. And then did fix it, and then because even then, after that, I was like, "This Sonic thing is going to be a fucking joke." How's it going to be good now? Yeah. You know, like, people are shitting on it now. How how they get... And actually, it was like, cool, well, actually, you know, we've got... I think it's almost like, well, we've got a secret weapon, and it's Jim Carrey. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah. You know, so, like, you know, for we're going to fix that thing, and then for the kind of the skeptical adults in the audience, don't worry, we've got... Jim Carrey in full effect. It's two bits of nostalgia in one. Yeah. And I enjoyed both. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Sonic. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say the nostalgia really worked it's, on it's, me for him. I do but. think it's interesting, though, that you said, like, it could be any other, like, kind of character yeah. around that story. And it, and you're right. Yeah. It didn't have to be Sonic. This could have been Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. It could have been Dr. Neo Cortex. Yeah. Kind of even looks similar. They're fucking, like, yeah. easy. Bam. Evil genius. Yeah. Fucking yeah. science boy. Yeah. Yeah. And it would have been cooler because Crash Bandicoot's better because I'm younger and cooler than those who like this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in terms of best slash worst, now I can at least safely predict that your favorite part of this is not a sex scene for once. That's true. <laughs> Why do you sound so sad? <laughs> if you want to see sex scenes involving Sonic, they are very, very <laughs> They're available. easy to find. There is a lot. There's a physical weight to the volume. Finn's of been doing s- some research for this show. <clears throat> don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> Please don't dive any deeper into this. But the three most popular categories of like fan made <laughs> cartoon porn yep. are Minions. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yep. My Little Pony. I wouldn't have picked any of those, but. You mean you wouldn't have thought they were popular? Or if you're scrolling through porn, you're not going to click on that Eat one? Eat both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I'm mean... looking for Chun-Li. <laughs> <laughs> Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2. We've talked okay. about this. Um, Chassis. Uh, minions are easy to draw. Yeah. Tic Tacs and overalls. Yeah. Um, and I think Sonic, I think, is just popular to draw. Yeah. There's a, that, that is a weird there's Sonic a, subculture thing going on there. There's l- l- a lot of dark-sided Sonic yeah. stuff on the internet, not, not just with sexual tones to it. Yeah, well, My Little Pony is pretty disturbing, too. Yeah, that's that kind of... That's often, that raises it? some real serious... I feel like Sonic questions the Hedgehog porn is way questions better. Questions I don't than, want to know the answer. Way safer than... It's way better, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, much more palatable. All right, so best. Yeah, best. So for me, best is easy. It's it's Jim Carrey that's return to form. Exactly what I've written. Jim yeah. Carrey. And worst. Worst. Well. Did you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. Right. Worst. Uh, so I've got kind of two, but these are quite kind of nitpicky and like personal to me. Uh, from the point of view of, you know, this is a kid's movie. There's quite a lot of excessive violence in terms of bullets and explosions and stuff like we that. Even, they... There's even the statement in the movie where Sonic is um, ducking from a drone that is trying to machine gun him and the the uh and uh, Mike Wazowski did yeah and he's like this feels excessive 
And I was like, yeah. To me, uh, like, that doesn't, machine gun. that doesn't excuse it. But also because it's machine guns in a kid's movie, it actually just, I, I don't feel like they're actually in danger. Mm. Because you're not going to see anybody get shot. No. So it's just, and they kind of just thought, oh, oh, I'll just dodge down here. Yeah. Here we go. I'm safe. Look, if you ever want to avoid machine gun fire, mm-hmm. just duck behind something that would not stop a machine gun bullet and you'll be all right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got a cardboard box uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the piece of wood, anything that would not stop the bullet. Uh, if you're in a movie, mm-hmm. if you go behind it, you'll be safe. Okay. Here's, here's a weird one for me that I like. When people get shot underwater in movies, yeah. if you shoot a bullet, yeah. it, probably won't hurt you after it goes through about a meter of water it slows it down very quickly interesting you, you can't get shot any further down yeah. than that it would have stopped by then so when i see whenever i see that in a movie i'm like well they haven't done their research have they <laughs> 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 well look i've learned something new today there we I've go i've never really considered that oh that's gonna i just like the you know that's gonna affect your underwater shooter well movie. I, I think exactly for <laughs> like well that's the thing when you movie me i'm just like uh Bullets look cool in water. Yeah, <laughs> That's and, and they do. And if they're, if they're near the surface, that makes sense that, oh, it's actually quite hard to get away because you're moving slower. Yeah. And, you know, bullets coming at you. From the perspective of uh, bad things about the movie, yeah. in terms of, like, within the storytelling of it, yeah. uh, it's the inconsistency with how fast he can go. Mm. Sometimes he just goes, like, you know, bullet time. Yeah. And then other times, it, you know, just That's twice true. as fast as a human or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it's... It's sonic. Know, maybe it's mood dependent. Yeah, I think for me the worst thing is lack of sex scenes. The absence of any sex scenes with uh, James Marsden and his hot girlfriend. <laughs> give me, give me your actual one, please. Uh, <laughs> I beg of you. I, 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 I'm not sure, but I guess. It's like the kind of the subplot of him going off to be a sheriff and all that sort of thing. Just just weak? Yeah. Right. It's just you just don't care. Yeah. You know, it's I like mean, this, we're, we're this waiting. This doesn't need a B-plot. The yeah. whole thing is centered around Sonic. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, what is Sonic doing and what is Dr. Robotnik doing? And these characters can interact with them and relate to them, but do we care that he may or may not go to San Francisco? Uh, the more subplots you have, the more branches that come off the main part yeah. of the story the more it feels like it's wrapped up by the end. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, oh, wow, and all those things worked out. All of them. Yeah. Even that random fucking thing I didn't care about. It all wrapped up and it's good and it makes me feel all fuzzy. How successful was this movie? We've already established pretty fucking successful. Uh, two sequels and a potential spin-off show. Well, in terms of success, prior to Super Mario, yeah. was it the most successful video game adaptation of all time? I... <sighs> let Must me du- be close. Let me double check. No, it was sixth. Oh, okay. Yeah, currently ninth. Well, that's kind of, I thought it was higher up. Yeah, man. Well, but I, I did mention earlier that, you know, this could be considered a superhero movie. Mm. So it was the highest grossing superhero film of the year, ending Marvel's decade long run from 2010 to 2019. Every single year, they had the highest grossing superhero film, and then they got outdone by Sonic the Hedgehog. By, by a blue hedgehog with weird Michael Jackson gloves on his hand. Well, the Flash couldn't do it. But maybe Sonic can. DC can't take down Marvel. Sega can. <laughs> <laughs> Sega. Um, also, I guess maybe just lastly, we do have this kind of, yeah, teasing a sequel thing with Tails. Yeah. But- never, never really liked Tails. No. I mean, as a mechanic of like being able to fly with the tail, I thought it was all right, but never really played as him myself. Yeah, yeah. I was just kind of like, eh, do we, do we need that? See, his name isn't actually Tails; that's his nickname because of his tails. Yeah, his name is Miles Prower. Yeah, you know what? Pun. That was one of those dumb fucking factoids yeah. that we would say at school. Yeah. To get people to show that we were really smart. Yeah, man. So Roger Ebert didn't get to see this movie, unfortunately. I did try showing it to him, but he was very rude and he denied it. Yeah. But somebody who works with the Roger Ebert website uh, had this to say. Is, yeah. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is only as successful as the amount of time you want to spend watching its animated protagonist go on instantly forgettable adventures. And boy, is that unfortunate. They gave it a one out of four. <laughs> but we give it a 10. But out of what? So you gave the... For comparison's sake, you gave the Mario movie a 10 out of 
17, mm. one of your highest scores, mm. what would you give Sonic the Hedgehog? think I've got to go and give this one a 10 out of 15. Wow. That is your second highest score. Damn, that's up there with... Resident Evil. One. That's up there with the legend of... Uh, the animated or Street movie. Fighter. Oh, the, yeah, Street Fighter 2, <laughs> the animated movie. That's the one with the titties in it. Yeah. Wow. Who would have thought Hedgehog could be as good as tit? Well, that's the thing, man. I actually, even re-watching this, I was like, oh, that's right. I really quite enjoyed this at the movies. Yeah. Uh, it is a pretty enjoyable film. And look, to be honest, we're talking about nostalgia. What got me is the nostalgia to Jim Carrey doing that style of performance. Yeah. So it actually had nothing to do with fucking Sonic, because as I said, I was a Mario guy. Yeah. It was actually me going, oh, man, I've missed this version of Jim Carrey in films. This is so fun. This is so enjoyable, and he's so good. Yeah. And I am going to have to match you. Yeah? 10 out of 15, man. Shit. I could watch this again tomorrow. Wow. Maybe be on my phone a bit or something, but, yeah. you know, it's fine. <laughs> You're maybe in pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, this is the weird thing. I, I will admit. Uh, I was like, should I start Sonic 2 right now? Like, after I finished, I was like... Don't was like, you fucking dare. <laughs> I was like, should I just start it? Because, like, what's going on there? No, no. You're not allowed <laughs> to actually enjoy yeah. this. We'll just save it. You were supposed we'll to just, just push through. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. And But, you know, really, the reason being, I was like, what's Jim Carrey going to do in the next one? Will yeah. he be as funny? Yeah. You know, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. really my question, my burning question. I didn't care what fucking Miles Power, Prower, I didn't care what he was doing. See, it's kind of like a pun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. Okay. So this week we've got three recommendations, uh, not including Googling certain things about Sonic. <laughs> but the first one is uh, a video by The Completionist, who, you know, it's pretty obvious what he does he completes games he doesn't just finish them he completes them uh there's one was about sonic advance which he's recently done um it's called sonic advance reminded me why 2d is my favorite hmm. it's the 2d games that hold up and i've also got something i've recommended before vfx artists react to bad and great cgi episode one it's wow what, it was the trailer of this movie that they reacted to that they reacted to initially that really blew their channel up. Mm. And, you know, they've surpassed 100 uh, episodes now. You know, they got the stuntmen react. I think they recently got child psychologists reacting to <laughs> kids' YouTubes and things. So they've, they've really found their own brand of what they're doing. And, boy, are they sticking to it. And then, as always, I like to put in a long-form video every now and then. So it's a half an hour video by a guy who specializes in long videos called Super Eye Patch Wolf, and his is the bizarre modern reality of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is, again, that dark side of things I was uh, talking about earlier. Well, uh, my recommendation mm -hmm. is for people to play Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Not so, the first one. Uh, not the, Definitely not the first one. Oh, or if you're going to do it, uh, do it for 21 seconds. <laughs> um, but I think that if you look at all the Sonics, and I've played, you, you know, you mentioned Sonic, I've played Sonic Advance. I, I I believe I own that one. I own the, one of the DS versions. I played the 3D versions. So I've actually played like a lot of Sonic. Like I haven't played Sonic Frontiers or any of the sort of, I guess, slightly more recent yeah, um, that, Sonics. Yeah, yeah, that's a weird one that didn't sell me on returning back to <laughs> it's it. Because, yeah, that's the thing is, like, I've, you know, I, I've sort of given up on Sonics fundamentally, but I think that Sonic 2 it represents the most, the purest Sonic. So it was, it was like, this new kind of game, this new kind of style, yep. uh, updated elements from the first one that made it better. Yep. Uh, but before it had kind of got to that being old hat and that like just being the same old Sonic. Yep. Sonic 2 is the high watermark of Sonics. Um, and even with all the new uh, like sort of Sonic Advance, Sonic DS, whatever that one was, like those are more playable potentially, yep. but they're, they're still in service of the Sonic, Sonic 2. Well, there was also Sonic Mania, which I've heard a lot about, which is mainly right. made by people who grew up loving Sonic. Right. Kind of growing up, being inspired by it, and then going, can we make a Sonic game? And they kind of got the green light, and that's been heralded as one of the best. Because okay. it's just, let's take all the best aspects of all those ones that we played growing up and put them all into one game. So Sonic 2 and Sonic Mania, if you're going to play a Sonic game, yep. go for those ones. 
Meanwhile, we're going to spin the wheel. Please land on anything not completely animated. Dead trigger. <laughs> Dead trigger? Yeah, I had never heard of it either. <laughs> that is not going to help. <laughs> God. I've never, I, like, there's like no, like, there's like a loose knowledge of something, and then there's a, a zero. Less than blood rain. Yeah. It just fucking, yeah. I don't even know. This is probably a zombie shooter. Right. So, and we've had a great history of those so far. <laughs> There's just not enough of those. <laughs> Fuck me dead. Right, dead trigger got a fucking dead response from us, didn't it? Uh, but speaking of responses, we're loving the responses that we're getting from you guys. Uh, so if you like what we do, please consider using the links in the show notes or the description and leave good reviews. It means a lot and means our project can grow. So you can leave likes, subscribe, recommend us, share us around. Yep. Really appreciate it. Yep, so give us a follow on YouTube, uh, particularly if you want to see uh, the good editing work that Finn puts in to make these episodes even more entertaining than the audio-only versions. Better, hopefully. Um, courtesy of, you know, the seeing the things that we're talking about and referencing. And thank you to everyone that has uh, let us know that you enjoy the podcast, and please continue, and we'll see you on the next episode. Absolutely. Maybe I'm splicing in uh, some... Some bit of Sonic stuff. Maybe I'm splicing it in right now. Maybe just little flashes here and there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that you don't know sound effect of him collecting rings. Maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. See you later.